In the final part of this lecture, I will show you the MP-hardness for the general case. I think we haven't done MP-hardness proof so far in this lecture, so it's, uh, it's about time. The theorem we want to prove is, in general, it's MP-complete to find an epsilon bar visibility representation extension. That it is in MP is pretty clear just from the extension as a witness. But to prove that it is MP-hard, we can reduce from planar monotone 3 set. So you all know satisfiability. In 3 such we have at most 3 literals in any class. In planar 3 such we can draw the graph with the variables and the clauses, where we have a vertex for every variable and a vertex for every clause, and an edge if a variable appears in a clause, planarly. And this is still MP hard. And monotone is even stronger. There we can draw all the vertices on a horizontal line. Above that, we have only clauses that contain only positive literals. And below, we have only clauses that contain only negative literals. So this is a very restricted version of the restat, but this is still MPR-hard. And this is one of the standard reduction tools that we use in graph drawing. The planarity helps a lot, and also the monotonicity. MP-completeness for that problem has been proven by Berg and Kosavi in 2010. We will first rotate the drawing a bit. So we want some gadget for every vertex, and then we want a gadget for every class. That's the basic idea. We have something here, and to the right we have something that's either true or false, and to the left we have some bars that are the opposite. And then this class gadget can only be completed if one of those at least is true. And this can only be completed if at least one of these is false. Not that I slightly adjusted the MP hardness proof in the Chaplik et al. paper to make it, I think, a bit clearer to represent here in a lecture. So let's first do the variable gadget. We have four independent vertices here that already are represented like this. And now we have to place two more bars between them, the x and the not x. At the moment, we have visibilities from these two bars, both to the top and to the bottom. And we're not allowed to have those. So these two bars, x and not x, have to block all these visibilities. Also, they have to see all the bars, and they are not allowed to see each other. So clearly they have to come from opposite sides, because otherwise they already see each other in the beginning. So let's have a look at the one from the left first. Where can we place it? It can be either here, or here, or here. Let's say we place it at the top. It has to block these visibilities, so it has to extend up to here. And now the one from the right, it cannot be placed inside here. It has to block the visibility from this downwards and from this downwards, so it has to be placed here. Now assume this one is placed at the bottom. Again, it has to block the visibility, so it has to go here. And now the right one has to block both visibilities to the top, so we have to place it here. And can we place it in the middle? No, because we have to block this visibility and this one, and those cannot both be blocked by the same image. So these are the only two possibilities. And we will make these two possibilities encode our variable x. This here means false, and this means true. So if the variable x is true, then it leaves on the right side at the top and on the left side at the bottom. If it's false, it leaves on the right side at the bottom and on the left side at the top. What we now have to make sure that if we have a class with only positive literals, that at least of those has to come from the top. Otherwise, it's not possible. So let's try to build a class gadget for a class x or y or z. 
for the other side where everything is negated, it's exactly the same, so we'll focus on this part. We have the three variables x, y, and z here, and it comes in either as true or at false. We have to make sure that one of those has to be true. Instead of getting a larger gadget here, we will divide it into two small subproblems. We want to construct an OR gadget. In this OR gadget, we want that some bar comes out either at the top, if at least one of those is true, or at the bottom, if both are false. If we have such a gadget, and then we just place a copy of it here, then we have a bar that comes out at the top if at least one of those is true, and at the bottom if all of those are false. And now to make sure that this does not happen, we just add two more bars here. Make sure that this bar has to be between them. If it's down here, then it does not see the top one. So to do this, we have to construct an OR gadget. But constructing an OR gadget is quite tough. Instead, we make use of an observation here. We will use only so-called OR prime gadgets. In an OR prime gadget, we can use the top part only if one of those is true, but we can always use the bottom. So we can have this part if both are false, or if at least one of them is true, this can always be used. That means that here on this side, this can always be used, but this still can only be used if at least one of those is true. So the reduction still works. It's just important that we cannot have this bar if all of them are false. So we'll now show you how to construct this or prime gadget. We have two variables that come in and we have a bar that comes out either as true or as false. We will use this graph here. We have four fixed vertices, one at the top, one at the bottom, one right below here, and one here between the two different types of y edges. Now the key part is, well, we have to block this visibility, but that's pretty clear because we have this x that comes from the left and this that comes from the right. It will always be between, so this is always blocked. But this bar here has to see both the x and the y. And if the y is down here and the x is down here, then we cannot use the z. So let's have a look at the cases. Both of those are true. Then if we place it here, it sees x and y. If we place it here, it also sees x and y. If x is true and y is false, we can place it here, but it has to jump over this bar to see both of those, and it's the same for the bottom. Now if x is false and y is true, then we can place it here, it sees both of them, or we can place it here, it sees both of them, and we also block the unwanted edges between these. On the other hand, if both are false, then of course we can place the bar here, we get both visibilities, but we cannot use the top one, because it would not block the visibility between x and this bar, and there's not an edge inside here. So this is forbidden, and that's exactly what you wanted. If both are false, then we cannot use the top. Otherwise, we can use both. And now combining all the gadgets, we get our MP hardness. Well, let's conclude. For rectangular epsilon bar visibility representation extension, we can solve it in order of n log squared n time for ST graphs. While it is MP complete in general, and it's also MP complete when restricted to the integer grid. On the other hand, there are still some open problems. If we drop the rectangular, then we don't know if we can still do it in polynomial time. Also, if we don't restrict to ST graphs, but just to directed acyclic graphs, we don't know. Further, for the strong bar visibility recognition representation extension, we don't know if it's polynomial time solvable or whether it's MP complete. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the lecture.